Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to some scary animations. You guys telling me your own experiences in the comments and us just having a good time and us bonding and growing closer. And that's the official title of this series, that whole long name. I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> I have no official title for this series. I know a lot of you guys are recommending me some names of what to call this series. But you know what? We're just going to keep winging it every single episode. Today, we have Llama Art on deck. If you guys want to check out the rest of their content, I will leave the link to their channel in the description box below. But we are going to check out some of these scary animations in this episode right now. If you guys cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. First animation of today's episode is called Scary True Pull Horror Stories Animated. And before we start this, guys, one of my biggest fears in the whole world is jumping into a pool or any type of body of water at night because it's so mysterious, so scary. I don't know. Like, the vibe just feels like, ugh. Like, I'm just shaking thinking about it. But that is honestly one of the scariest things to me is, like, jumping in a dark pool of water, not knowing what's down there, not knowing what's going to grab your butthole. But speaking of buttholes, make sure you clench yours right now because we're about to jump into this. Let's go. All right, come on. It was approaching the end of summer, and my friends and I wanted to do some cool, mischievous things before going back to school. Oh, yeah. Let's so, it, boys. we had the genius idea one night to sneak into a nearby community pool. It was actually only a couple blocks away. Why do they all look so bored? Like, they look like they don't want to be doing this right now. They look like they want to get high and just eat chips and cookies. It's right smack in the middle of a residential area. So instead of sitting on a main road or something, it actually just sat around a bunch of houses on a quiet road. During a hot day, the little parking lot would be full and the spot would be bustling. Oh yeah. But at one in the morning, the place was of course dead. No sexy girls there. There's obviously a big fence surrounding the whole front entrance, as well as a cage that gets closed up when the place closes. So our best way was to get in through the side. We snuck into the backyard of a neighboring house and hopped the fence over to the pool. Come on, jump it over, dude. It was as easy as that. <laughs> the four of us took off our shirts and jumped into the pool. Uh, which in retrospect <laughs> wasn't smart, since any of the neighbors could have heard the splashes and just called the police. That's but true. we were dumb high schoolers. It was very, very dark within that hole in closing. Oh, this pool that is had so no creepy lights, which is why it that. closed at sunset. James, Courtney, and Alyssa were on the other side of the pool as I was just kind of doing my own thing at first, swimming around and getting my face wet. I With saw the hat Alyssa on, get bag. out of the pool shortly after and run away. Where's she going? I swam over to see what was going on. She was just going to the water fountain, though. The three of us just bopped around in the water for a bit. That's not the three of you. That is literally a floating hat and nothing else. Don't try to play me! And eventually we heard Alyssa jump back into the pool from the other side. It was too dark to see much more than her black hair covering her face. Oh god! But just then we heard Alyssa playfully call something to us as she was walking back to the pool. Oh god! The three of us in the pool looked at each other. Oh guys, I'm I getting the I know they heaps. were doing the same thing the as me, counting heads. Oh. There were three of us on this side of the pool. And here came Alyssa walking over to our side. Wait, they didn't even notice that? Look at how Alyssa looks, okay guys? Engrave that into your mind. You know, engrave that into your big brain. Look at that! That doesn't even look like Alyssa! That looks like Melissa! That is not Alyssa! That's a creepy demon ghost lady! Well, Alyssa got in, but the three of us were distracted, looking at the head bopping around the water across the pool. <laughs> James said across the pool, Who is that? Who is the head? Get the gun, Not get even the strap! even two seconds later, the head went underwater and disappeared from view. We took this time to whisper to each other, mostly things like, what should we do? What if that's security? And should we run? The only thing that you should be whispering is, what the fuck? Suddenly I felt something grab my leg with force and tried pulling me down into the water. <gasps> I kicked, splashed, and yelled for help. James came over to pull me out of the pool, while the girls were already running for it, oh, screaming. Oh, that's not a real friend right there. <laughs> it wasn't until I got to the stairs of the pool that the grip on my leg was released and I was free. We hopped the same fence we climbed over to get in and ran all the way back to Alyssa's house. I was convinced that whoever that was was a security guard. That is, no until they literally way. tried to pull me under the water. We don't know what to think. There are a few possibilities. Maybe it was just another kid messing with us. Maybe it was a security guard who went way too far. Or, most likely, it was a dangerous person who had ill intent. No. 
You know what? I think that it was most likely a troll. It was most likely a troll. I mean, come on now. If you guys believe in those kinds of things, like it was a demonic presence or whatever, I think it would have done something way more sinister to that guy than just pulling his hairy little cankles. Nobody cares about that if you're a demon. But the next video we are going to watch is called Disturbing True Snapchat Stories. So let's go. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. Never One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, probably <laughs> 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in a gym at all. I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. Yup. And when you got the headphones in. I took my time in. finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then, he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. He just wants some friends, I'll man. Calm down, douchebag. But eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Hey. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, whenever I go to the gym and I make some friends, they're always like, Hey, what's your Instagram? Hey, what's your Snapchat? Hey, what's your Twitter? Hey, what's your blah blah blah? And I'm like, yo, 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 I don't do any of that stuff. I don't have any like personal Instagrams or Twitters and stuff like that. Everything is related to the Cub Scouts. So every time somebody at the gym asks me if I have any of that stuff, I always say, I don't do that. And they're like, what are you, man? Are you a freaking robot? How do you not have IG or Twitter or Snapchat? I'm just like, bro! Get off my hairy nuts! Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. Exactly, I say I After don't have I social media. I gave him media. my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not without saying bye like three times though. Weird, who wears sandals to the gym? So that guy that socks? Night, I got a snap on my phone hella saying, wet. from Sean. I immediately sighed and said, oh no. Just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap, and the kid was in a creepy, weird pose, face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his hand and a half smile on his face. Something like Michael Jackson or some The text over the picture oh, was he said, hey, with wise. I muttered the words, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. <laughs> That's my guy my right there. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. He said, what the I'm fuck? I'm going to remove him and make it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. The hell are you watching, my guy? I'm sure not even a minute later. Again, a message popped up on my phone saying Snapchat from Sean. He sent him a I dick waited pick. a few minutes before opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed. No smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. The text over the image said, Why did you remove me? That doesn't even look like him. That looks like a 44-year-old man. Now I went as far as to block him, meaning he couldn't snap me anymore. Yeah, but he'll see you at the that gym. That was that. I threw my phone Awkward. on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone goes off saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. He actually made a new account. Ugh. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. <gasps> it was a picture of my front lawn. What? The text over it, answer me, bitch. Oh, he called you a bitch? The first thing I could you think gonna take of was, that? how did he find my address? Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends are. That's why I don't mess with Somehow, Snapchat. I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. You should. Oh, no. It Get was the, the sound bat. of taps on the Get window. The strap. I took a deep breath, and with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the Whoa! kid into my room by his neck. No way! I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. You guys, you guys smell that? You know what that smells like. <laughs> I don't need to say it. Mmm. Mmm, that sweet, sweet smell of bull. Now I called 911. 
By the time they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account. But anytime <laughs> somebody new adds me on... <laughs> That's the only thing that worries him, guys. Making a new Snapchat account. On the app. I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again. Alright. Cool. That wasn't that creepy. That was more, like, annoying than creepy. Oh, it said disturbing. I thought it said creepy true Snapchat stories. Okay. It wasn't really that disturbing. Okay, guys, the first Snapchat story animation wasn't that scary, but there's a second one, so maybe we'll get twice the spooks? Who knows? But it's a disturbing true Snapchat story, too, so let's go. This is a short but terrifying story of something that happened when I was Snapchatting a friend. It better be. I'm pretty young. I'm or only else. 13, still in middle school. A girl I really liked had just recently started snapping me selfie pictures, and we started messaging each other for a few nights. Uh -huh. One night when I was watching TV, she sent me a snap of herself laying in her bed without a caption. Whoa! I sent okay, a message guy. saying, what's up? She sent another identical picture, this time with a caption saying, not much, you? She set the timer to 10 seconds, so it gave me plenty of time to analyze the picture, Are you including joking me, her bedroom in the background and the dark outline of a person standing by her window. Whoa! Okay, that's creepy. I quickly sent a response message, saying, Is that your brother by the window? She sent another identical snap, this time captioned, What do you mean? In this picture, the figure at the window was closer, <gasps> and I could see a hand pressed up against the glass. How do you not see that if you're taking the picture? It's not like you take the picture, then instantly send it. You can analyze to see if you got a fugly looking face. If I take a picture, I'm like, damn, I'm ugly. But then I could like analyze the background and be like, oh shit, there's a guy right there. How do you not see that, you big old bug eyed freak? I closed the snap before the timer even ran out so I could tell her quicker. I said, there's somebody at your window, turn around. She opened my snap almost immediately. And then I didn't hear from her again on the app. Ooh. I grew more and more worried as the minutes passed. Why I texted you call her, her a few then, times you pussy? to no avail. I tried calling her a few there times to no avail as well. I didn't know her house phone number, otherwise I would have called her parents. It wasn't until midnight when I was already laying in bed that she finally texted me back. That's she not explained her. the whole situation. That's not her. As soon as she looked at her window and saw the person standing there, she screamed. And that caused the person, who turned out to be a 20-something-year-old man, to open the window and jump into the room. Whoa. From there, she ran to her parents' room and woke her dad, who went to her room to find nothing but an open window. It wasn't exactly a personal story of mine, but it freaks me out nonetheless, knowing that the only thing that saved my friend from whatever could have happened was the fact that I was able to see the window through her selfies, unbeknownst to the creeper at her window. Okay, that one was actually a little bit more creepy. That one was actually creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Like, out of 10, it probably made my nipples jump 4 out of 10. This next animation is called Night Shift Stories Animated, and I don't know what it is, guys. Tell me if you feel the same way, but I always love this setting right here. Like, you're working the night shift, something creepy happens, and you only see this stuff at night. Like, you don't see these creepy scenarios happen during the day, only at night when it's super lonely and that one person is coming in at the night shift. And I don't know, something about this just really intrigues me. Am I just creepy and weird? Let me know down below in the comments below. I probably am. two years ago. I was called in to do the night shift 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. at 7-Eleven since God somebody damn. pulled out. The store was located on a busy road in a rather quiet and rural area. During the night shift, you could expect anywhere from 10 to 20 people come in to buy a beer or something else. This one particular night, there was this one guy, mid-twenties, that came in. He started making weird noises, like loud yelling noises. I assumed he had some kind of mental disability. In fact, my brother has a mental disability, so I immediately felt sympathy for the guy. He walked up to the counter without any items, with his head facing me, but... His eyes were looking up at the ceiling. I felt uncomfortable. He's a zombie. I honestly didn't know how to deal with it. Cheese-A chips. I tried nice. speaking with him, but 
He only responded in loud noises. I kept checking if he was with someone outside, but he was alone. There weren't any cars in the parking lot, so I assumed he walked. He stood there for so long, looking up at the ceiling and making noises, that I tried to get him out by handing him a bag of chips and telling him he can go. <laughs> I tried finding some kind of number to call for someone to help him. Then, out of nowhere, he finally turned around and walked out of the store. I felt so horrible for the man, but at the same time, I felt a bit creeped out. <laughs> About an hour later, the phone on the counter rang. I picked up to hear the familiar yelling sounds of the man from earlier. It caught me off guard. I didn't know what to think. Wait, so you're telling me this man walked in the store, started yelling like, ah! And then he walked up to the counter, didn't say one word, all of a sudden knew the phone number to the specific 7-Eleven in the middle of who the fuck knows where, and he just starts going, ah! Come on, man! Other than this has to be some kind of prank. I hung up on them. He's trolling and you! He's now becoming paranoid of my surroundings, constantly checking the outside through the windows. Now that's scary though, for real. Come four o'clock, the person working after me came in, finally allowing for me to go home. It wasn't my problem anymore. <laughs> I got home and threw all my stuff on the table. It wasn't ready my to problem get to sleep. no more. But my phone rang within a minute after entering the door. Not again. I felt a chill run down my spine. Why would someone be calling at 4 a.m.? I could only imagine it was bad news. I braced myself and picked up the phone to hear the man again. I felt sick to my stomach as I listened to the loud noises he made. I struggled to slam the phone to the receiver. All night I felt like I was being watched, even with all the blinds shut. And I could swear I heard strange noises coming from all over my house. I refused to get any sleep until the sun came up. This dude paranoid. Weeks passed and I had forgotten about the incident, until one day, when going into the basement for the first time in a while, I found that papers had been scattered all over the floor, and when I went into the basement closet, I found writing on the walls. 7-Eleven had been written in Sharpie on the wall, along with the address to the 7-Eleven I worked at what? and my house address. The most disturbing Why? part. I also found various kitchen knives, along with a large pocket knife sitting in the closet. How did he even get in there? It started out as seemingly just an innocent person, turning into something of a prank, ultimately turned into something much more horrifying. He had been living down there for God knows how long, and I'm just grateful that no for whatever way, reason, he, was living he changed there? his mind and left, because I haven't seen or heard from him since. If he lived there, wouldn't he have, like, pissed on the walls and shat on the floor? All I can say is, that man is dangerously ill. Wow. Okay, so that man came in, looked at him once, and he was like, Yeah, I'm sleeping in this guy's basement. What is up with some of these random things that happen? That is not what I expected at all, but that is creepy, though. Like, somebody living in your house. I remember there was, like, a story. I think it was, like, an old man or an old woman would leave for work, and then somebody was living inside the attic or the closet or something. I know somebody out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. An old man or an old woman lived in a place by themselves. Whenever they would leave for work, the person would come out from like a little space in the closet or the attic, like had like a removable piece of wall, and would come out, you know, make themselves some breakfast, use the bathroom, take a shower, and then go back inside that little space in the wall. And I think how the owner of the house found out about it was that they set up cameras, and then once he left, he would see the guy come out in the camera, which is so creepy. But it's also very interesting at the same time. Like, how did that guy get in there in the first place and just, like, say, okay, I'm gonna live here now. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. Last animation we are gonna watch of today's episode. And I know, guys, I know. You guys could watch these with me all day. And I could, too. You know, that's so sweet of you to say that. But this is the last one of today's episode. So don't forget to leave a like if you guys want to see more of these. But it's called House Sitting Horror Stories. So let's check it out. I've never house sat in my life, so I have no relatable experience. But if you guys do, let me know down low in the comments below of you guys house sitting. But we're going to check out what this person's story is. It better be creepy. A couple weeks ago, my dad came home and pitched me a small job offer. One of his co-workers was going away for a few days and needed somebody he could trust to watch over his house. The reason my dad pitched this to me was because the man's house has a big CCTV system. 
basically a camera in every room, and then an operating desk where all screens could be watched on a big monitor. I will say though, if I ever had that in my house, I'd be terrified watching over the footage that was recorded because I'm like, please don't see something, please don't see something creepy! And I'm a computer science major, so my dad just always assumes that I know how to work anything technological. The man told my dad that he'd pay me $200 for the two days just Damn, to watch the house. $200? Whatever that meant. 200 bones? My dad drove me to the house and introduced me to the man whose name doesn't matter. <laughs> the man made His it name seem don't like matter. He preferred I stay in the upstairs room with the monitors as opposed it really to roaming the house all day. That was fine with me though. So when I wasn't eating, I was mostly just sitting in that fish room dicks? with the TV on. And Wait, did that say fish dicks? Hold on. That did say fish dicks. What are fish dicks? Are you literally eating a dick of a fish? What? I've heard of fish dicks. But not fish dicks. Do you suck on them? Like, what do you do? You I know what? Who cares? Eating. I was mostly just matter. sitting in that room with the TV on in the background and doing schoolwork on my laptop. Ironically, the thing I was doing the least was keeping an eye on the monitors. Night came. I started wondering where in the house I should sleep since, surprisingly, we hadn't discussed that. <laughs> sleep in his so bed. So I sat back down at the desk and looked at all the different rooms on the screens to see which rooms had beds or couches. I noticed something I wasn't expecting to notice, though. The back screen door was open downstairs. Ooh. I didn't remember it being open. <sighs> I looked through each and every camera screen in a panic. <sighs> in the living room, a closet door was open. This one I knew wasn't open earlier. That's the face of I'm fucked! I texted my dad to call the man and ask him if he came back home. Meanwhile, I continued watching the screen. On the grainy, dark image, a tall person who resembled oh! only a black on the screen stepped out. Oh, that is actually scary as hell! I pulled my arms off the desk as I covered my mouth with my hands in shock. As I did this, however, my left elbow pulled some heavy object from the desk onto the floor, creating a big thud. Oh my the person god. Oh, you freaking idiot! Oh, you freaking idiot! The, the ceiling as a response to the noise. They went for the stairs, walking up very, very slowly, step by step. Oh my god, guys, I got, I got the freaking goosebumps saying, on my goosebumps. No, spoke to guys. Oh, you know what? It doesn't even matter. Just like that guy's name, it doesn't even matter. I got goosebumps, ago. though. Why? I got so caught up in my phone texting my dad to send oh, help. Oh, he's coming, he's coming. I didn't coming. even pay attention to hot. hot, 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 hot. There was a knock at the door. I F looked at it that. and then the screens. F that. The first screen I laid my eyes on was the one showing the person outside the door to the room I was in. When I remembered that door had no lock, the only thing I could think to do was jump out the window <laughs> into the bushes below. I ran halfway down the block and then stopped when my dad called me. I had him call his friend and ask him if he was expecting somebody in the house. The man said he had no relatives or friends who had his key or would ever let themselves into his home. So he called the cops and had them review the footage. I got to watch all of it, and it showed everything. From the moment the intruder broke the glass to the backyard door, to the moment I jumped out the window and him running away shortly after. The intruder was never found. The footage was just too dark to identify his face. Wait, I thought it was a spirit. It kind of looks like it, right? My thing is, why would that guy even go upstairs and knock on the door? If you're an intruder, let's just say he's trying to rob the place. Why would you go to the place where you heard the thud? You know, when he dropped that thing off the desk. Why would you go up there and then knock on the door like you own the place? Like you're big digging it or something. Wouldn't you be like, oh shit, and then just run away? That had to have been a ghost. That had to have been like a demonic presence or something. Because why else would an intruder actually go to where the noise is and knock on the door? Wouldn't you want to go away from the noise? I don't know. That's super creepy, though. All right, guys. But that's going to do it for watching animations with your old pal, Jay. If you guys want to see more of this series. And I know you guys are loving it because you guys are always telling me your own stories. You guys are leaving a lot of love and support. You guys are leaving likes on the videos. If you guys want to see more of this stuff, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.